<laughs> Mr. Ed here. Today is August the 19th, 2022. Walking over to the honey house right now to once again do some more chores. But today, today's video, I'm focusing on a cutout that Charlie and I did is actually a month ago today, the 19th of July, we did the, the cutout. And I wanna do an update on it because these bees have a particular interest to me simply because I don't like doing cutouts during the hot months in, in the dearth because it's been my experience that bees don't do well um, when, when there's no honey flow and it's hot. So it's, it, I, I'm very curious. I haven't opened up that box since um, they were set up. So I'm curious to see what they're doing and how they're getting along. And I'll, I'll fill you in on all the details. But before we get to that, and as you can see, and probably here in a few seconds, it's like really bad outside today. Let me show you that sky. Oh yeah. It's fixing to come down again. It, we've been getting a lot, a lot of rain here. Uh, there's a system, I don't know if it's tropical, that's moving in. Um, but I'm gonna try to get this work done um, before we get too much rain. I might have to stop intermittently and stop and, and wait till the rain passes. But before we get to the hive in the back, I wanna, I, I've got a couple, I did a couple more uh, renderings of, uh, second renderings of some wax, and I'm getting ready to, to open up to open up to <laughs> dump those buckets and I want you to see what we got so let me set the camera up and let you get a good shot on what these beautiful box boxes of boxes <laughs> beautiful blocks of wax are looking like by the grace of God by the end of today well I'll have an update on the on the hive condition oh and there's another surprise too about this swarm that I caught in that last video in fact I'll post links to the video of the swarm and links to the video of what Charlie and I could doing that cutout as well in the description. So check out the description if you're interested in seeing those videos. All right, let's dump out some wax, huh? This is what our blocks of wax look like inside of the buckets, and they are, I mean, these are gorgeous blocks. Um, they're second rendering, so they should be very, very clean. Just a little bit of trash on the bottom that needs scraping out and we'll find out just how big blocks of wax they are. Dump out the second one. Another gem, huh? Wow, we and these um, I, I gotta go weigh these things and tell you how much they weigh. And I also want to show you, I re-rendered the two blocks of wax that I had done in that last video, and I'll show you what what that block of wax came out looking like. The rain has chased me inside for the time being. It should be clearing up pretty soon, but for right now I'm inside, and I want to show you. This block right here was the one that I had done last week's video on. And I added a little bit more wax to it on the second rendering. And now this block is right, right around 22 pounds right here, this one. Uh, this block right here weighed in at right about 18 pounds. 
and this block right here, that one was right around 19 pounds. And the size of them, 10 and a half inches by seven and a half. Now they're all gonna be about 10 and a half wide. And this one is six and a half. And it is six and three quarters. So beautiful blocks of wax. And all that wax right there, <laughs> it's going to be added to that stack of wax right there. Yeah, we're gonna have plenty of wax to put on our foundations this year. And with the dumping out of the wax and showing it off, it's now time to get outside and get busy on what this video is really all about. Man, the smell of this fresh wax is absolutely amazing. I always liken it to the smell of like a spring you know, on a clear morning. I mean, it's just so fresh and sweet smelling. It just can't be beat. And there is the hive that we are going to be looking at today. Now, the first thing you'll notice that it does have two deeps on it. However, that top super is only basically a shim. It's a shim to cover the feeding that I'm doing. So I feed the bees internally. And if you look at that video that um, on where Charlie and I removed these bees, it was underneath a bay window and it was loaded, loaded, loaded with honey. In fact, uh, the comb was so misfigured and thick and I couldn't frame any of it up. So I wound up crushing and straining it and got over six gallons of honey. And now I'm just feeding the honey right back to them. And this, this bottle was my fifth bottle and this is the sixth bottle that, that I'll be feeding them. So uh, after today's video, I'm going to be changing out bottles, I think. So the, that's the first thing is, is I'm feeding the, the bees and I've already fed them uh, over a gallon back of their same honey. And this is what prompted me to, to, to do the video today. I looked out here yesterday and right there, see that rubber band that is coming out of the hive. And so this is just indicative that the comb is now attached to the frames so much now that they're cutting the rubber bands and starting to, starting to drag them out. So let's go ahead and open up this hive and see what's going on. And right before I remove the shim box and the inner cover and the honey, I want to talk about what I did setting up this, this hive. I don't remember how many frames of brood that I framed up. I, I want to say it was either four or five. It might have even been six. I really don't remember. I do know, however, that at the time that I set the hive up, that since I wasn't using their honey, and generally, I'll, if I'm able to, I'll frame up some of the honeycomb and give it to them. But like I said before, the comb wasn't frameable. And the best option for me was to crush and strain it, like I said. Also, most of the comb was wet. And at this time of year, with the hive beetles being so bad, wet comb is it's just such an attractant to the, uh, to the bees, so easy for them to get in there, lay their eggs, and the bees are so stressed from the removal to begin with that they almost neglect doing their duties, and so the hive beetle, they emerge and they basically run the bees off because the bees can't control them at that point. So it's, it's why I try the best I can to only put dry comb inside of the cutout because at particularly at this time of year with the hive beetles being so bad you want to do everything you can to eliminate that possibility of letting the beetles get a toehold in the hive and then boom ruining the whole situation for you. So 
so that I only put four or five other frames in there uh, and those frames were drawn out now because my plans are, are was to feed the bees immediately that's what I did and so what I'm kind of expecting to see is the gallon plus honey that I fed back to them is going to be stored now in, in those frames it's been four weeks so hopefully our queen should have had enough time to lay and we should have some pretty good new brood in there now here it is middle of August and generally our queens are starting to not shut down but slow down in for as far as their production of eggs go so I'm not expecting to see a mass quantity of brood in there but I am expecting to see some new brood uh, and, and again I don't like doing removals in the summertime due to the fact of the stress one that the bees uh, go under when you do a removal the fact that the heat of, of the of the summer down here in Louisiana is so it's just bad for the bees so that adds to the stress and then with the with the idea of stress and beetle threat and robbing out threat the there's just so many things that can go wrong in, in doing removals at this time of year for me down here. So that's why I really don't like to do them. However, sometimes the, the case just is that the bees have to go and it just happens to be at the wrong time of year. So when they do that, which is what I did in this one, I only put dry brood comb in there and drawn frames of, of comb. And I'm forced to feed it and if anybody knows me I do not feed my bees only when I have to and this is an instance where I really have to all right let me put my suit on I'm not gonna smoke them we're gonna um, just pop the inner cover and we're gonna see exactly you're gonna see for the first time just like I'm gonna see what these bees um, are up to now there were a lot of bees when we backed in this and and one of the things that's very normal after doing a removal is you'll see a decline in the number of bees because like I said bees get stressed out that stress will kill bees that stress also attracts the, the hive beetle and so I know the number is going to be less I think that when I put the bees in there we probably had eight frames of bees good eight frame of bees I don't know what we're gonna see I'm hoping that we're gonna see eight frames but who knows so let me put on my suit and we're going to open up this box and we're both going to see for the same at the same time what is going on with these bees now with the cloudy rainy conditions that we have today ideally it's not the best time to go into a hive cuz we're going to have a lot of our bees in the in the box look at that boy look at those bees sucking up on that honey huh <laughs> yeah. And this is the way I feed them. I just put a couple of holes in the in the lid right there, and I just put it right over the hole that's in on the inner cover. And that's my way I like to feed my bees internally. And here in, in Louisiana, you want to feed your bees internally. All right, let's see what's going on. Open up this inner cover. That looks very good and as you can see it was one two three four five frames of their brood that I put in and so then the other five frames these five were drawn comb that I put out and I can see just looking at this that they decide to work these frames right here so I, suspect this is where they're storing that honey that I'm feeding because I don't see a lot of stuff on these frames. So let's let's pull it off of this side first and see what's going on. And I did put drawn comb in here um, but they're repairing it right now and I see a little bit of nectar in this outside one or honey. 
they're drawing this stuff out. So a, a lot of this stuff that I'm feeding, and I'm sure they're using it right now to draw out. And so I, I see there's a high beetle here, and there's one right there. See that right there? There's one. Let's see if we can get it. And there's one right here. Yes. And this is where you're, you're, you're going to find the high beetles. You're going to find the beetles where the, the bees aren't patrolling. So this is the outside frame. There's no bees over here. And so this is why you would, you would suspect to find high beetles in these areas. All right. I don't see any in that one. All right, let's pull this next frame out. And I can see already they've really drawn this comb out because this had gone through the uncapper and it chops it up a little bit but you can see how smooth the edges are and you can see the white white comb right here so they they start to build this up draw it out it's looking good and the same as well on this side you can see where the white white comb this is all brand new what they're doing right here frame and they've drawn a lot of it out on this side and you, you can see how they've gone over the comb over the edge of the board right here and the reason they've done that is because the next piece of comb which is a piece of cutout comb there's a, a void there and so they they build funny comb and this is what one of the things that the bees will do when you do cutouts. If you don't fill up the frame completely with wax, then the bees will make this kind of comb that extends into the other frame. And it makes taking apart a cutout hive very difficult. All right, let's move this one to the side. All right, and here is our very first frame. This mark right here, this is how I mark which frame I put my queen on and so when I open it up I can just pull this frame out when I go to release her. And I just have to be really careful not to grab another because the rubber bands will they'll form the rubber bands into the wax like they did here and it'll catch on the next frame and you can see at this point right here where they have attached the comb to the frame and down on the bottom as well they've completely attached all that comb to the frame so that's really good this this piece of comb is pretty secure I'm not gonna pop those rubber bands because they, I'll let them do that. They they know a lot more about engineering than I do. However, the ones that are cut, I will remove those. So that looks very good. And the bees are very calm. But you can see there's it's the numbers, at least on this section, are pretty low. All right. Our next piece. And again, I have to check to the rubber bands. This one is already popped. So let's go ahead and take this one out, as well as this one. And you can see, I use long rubber bands. These rubber bands are seven inch rubber bands, and they work very, very well uh, to put attach the comb to the frame at the cutout. Yeah, they, they really cut a bunch of these rubber bands. All right, let's pull this one out and take a look-see. And look at this. All this honey that I've been feeding was right here. They've capped this honey right here. 
Look at that. Beautiful. Great job. Now, these bees are very, very calm, considering what our weather is doing right now. All right, this next frame, I filled it up completely. As I'll show you, see like this one, this area right here doesn't have anything in it. So this is where, the, because this area didn't have any comb in it, and the frame behind it where the queen was didn't have any comb in it, they, they can do some really weird stuff in that open space. They don't, they don't build comb uniformly, and it, it does make difficult to take a, a hive apart at that point. But this next frame, you can see that I filled the frame up very nicely with comb, and as such, they did a really, really good job. And all the rubber bands are cut on this. They did a really, really good job of attaching that comb to the frames. I'm still nervous about tilting it, so let me hold it. And you can see how I did attach, uh, put, cut those combs in there and put them in there. Now I can smell honey, but there's nothing wet in there, so that's very good. I, I don't want to tilt this stuff because it, it, nothing is supporting it, and I don't, I don't trust it as far as the weight goes. All right, so let's remove these little rubber bands right here. And we're going to set this one back down in here. I'm still looking for brood. Let me, let's pull that next frame up. Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, so that I, I can see where it's starting to pull this comb off right here. So let's separate this out. It's all brand new stuff. It's very tricky to remove this stuff without causing harm because we don't want to rupture cells and have honey spill out. All right, good. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna have to move this one. It's attached to the other cone next to it. All right. And let's take a look, see at this one. Again, I'm, I'm a little hesitant about tilting it. I see some old capped brood in here. So this must have been the last, very last bit. Like I said, it's been a month. So that must be the very last bit of the old brood that was in here that um, hasn't hatched out yet. Let's take off these rubber bands. Let's see. Calmly do this. Oh, look at that. Look at this brew right here. Now, this is relatively new. In fact, I think I see some uncapped, it's uncapped larva right in there. So we know our queen is laying. How about that? Look at that. So we got some uncapped right in here. And that's awesome. That's very good. I think she's going to be on this next frame. <laughs> I always say that to Charlie. She's going to be right, right here. All right. Let's see if we can find our queen. Again, how we like to attach the comb. And I hate to separate this because I'm opening up honey, but they can go ahead and close that up pretty quick, quickly. But I'm not doing a lot. All right, let's put this one out. And again, some older brew, but from the last three weeks. That's older brood right there. I'm looking for it right now. But I see uncapped brood in there as well. So she's she is laying in there. And then you can see here, this this brood, here's uncapped brood. So this is all laid within the last three weeks, all this stuff in here. And 
And again, I'm not expecting to find a lot of brood, but just the idea that we have brood is a very good sign of the health of this colony. On this side, Falcon. Now, if you all see her, let me know. Now these next two frames are drawn comb that I put in here and we'll see if she may be over on that section. I kind of, I'm not expecting to see her over there because it should just be honey over there. And I would imagine, you know, she's going to be around the brood. But this is the, the heaviest laid brood that I've seen uh, so far. This is a drawn comb. This, wow, they've loaded this thing up. And I'm looking for her real quick. I see uncapped larva in there right there. So she was laying on this frame right here. The light is terrible. I can't see if there's eggs or anything. And then on this side, it's all honey on this side, so I definitely don't expect to find all this stuff. And I don't see her there either. So we'll pull out the last frame since we've done this many already. May as well. beetles on this outside edge. Hive tool quickly dispatches them. <laughs> All right, let's put it back together and one more quick look to see if we find it. Yeah, you can see I've got them a little bit upset with my moving around of these frames. Oh, there she is right there. Look at that. Look at that. There she is right there. All right, so we're going to put her back in, and we're going to close up this hive. Oh, any bees that are trapped up in here they can escape right there. So I'll just continue feeding them. Like I said, I've, I've still got five gallons or four and a half gallons in there. It's their honey. I'm just feeding it back to them and they're making good use out of that, that honey. So that's, um, I'm, I'm pleased. I, I, I would almost want to reduce this hive to a five frame or, or a, a nuke or an eight frame, but I'm, I'm gonna leave them alone just as it is. I'll continue to monitor them and if, necessary I will reduce them down to an eight frame uh, I mean they, I think they would do real well in an eight frame um, it's just that I'm lazy and if I leave ten frames and they can keep on building up at the rate of speed that they they want and I won't have to keep up or keep ahead of them so that's that's it I mean they're, they're in they're in good shape uh, I'm glad that they're here on the back porch of the honey house where I can monitor them really carefully so it's a good thing. And I want to do one more thing uh, before I end the video. And it's just a really interesting story about what happened to that swarm that I caught uh, last week that I brought up here to the Abbey. Let me, let me go over to that box and we're, I'll pick up that story over there. Now let me tell you what happened to this swarm that I caught the other day. And you saw that on the video, I just caught the swarm, it was in a bush, just bent the bush down, shook the bees into it. And, and you can look, on the video last week, you can see when I showed these bees that there might have been two frames, three frames maybe, uh, of bees in there. It was, the swarm was probably a pound and a half, two pounds of bees at the most, that, that was it. And then I, I had three frames in there, I went and dropped in two frames of honey on the outside edges of it and 
just assuming about, you know, they'll, they'll just do fine. Well, after I dropped those frames of honey inside of this box, came out here, it's no more than, no more than three hours, two hours, three hours later, and I'll be a son of a gun if this hive was not getting robbed out. And I can understand that, that the swarm hadn't really accepted this box as home, they weren't defending it, and you know, they out of place and out of sorts. And so I can understand how they allowed robber bees to come in. It, it was probably an easy deal for them to do it. And of course, I didn't want that to happen. So <laughs> I still have the tape up here. I, uh, I just got me some duct tape and I covered the entrance. I covered the entrance of the box. Normally, when I have a hive that's being robbed out, uh, I'll cover the entrance, and that evening, you know, the next morning, I'll open it up and let the bees go and uh, and go their own way, hopefully, and that they didn't chase the the hive bees out of there. Well, I didn't I didn't want to let those bees go. I, I said, you know. The, the high bees that are now in this box that, that I shook into this box, you know, I, I want them to, to stay in there. So I said, I'm going to just leave this box sealed up for three days. And that's exactly what I did. Uh, I mean, I've never done that before. I usually, like I said, just do it, you know, a few hours later the next morning. But this one I left sealed up for three days. And I, I just thought that when I came out three days later that once I once I removed the tape from the entrance and the entrance is just a tiny three-quarter inch little hole once I removed the tape from it that any of the, the robber bees that were in there phew, that they they leave because that would be their their escape now but I was surprised to see that no bees came out when the tape was removed at first I thought well did I kill the bees did they get overheated and I said, man, I gotta look. So then I popped the the lid off of this thing. And now what, what I saw was unbelievable. When I started out, I had two, maybe three frames of bees in the box. And when I opened it up, it was now completely five frames of bees in there. Those hot bees, not the hot bees, but the robber bees that came in and I closed off after three days, this became their home and now they are part of this swarm. So in just a, a matter of days, the, uh, the swarm of bees, they, they got their own uh, army of collectors now. So let me, I'm going to pull the top off of it again and I'm going to let you see how many bees are in this little box now. Because remember, there used to only be two. Go back and look on the video. You'll see there's just a little bit of bees, but now there's this many. So check this out. Now I don't want to keep the lid off for too long in here, but let me just show you what's going on with these bees. Look at this. <laughs> That's definitely double the amount of bees in that hive right there. Oh my gosh. That was a good trick. I'm going to have to try this experiment again. Robber bees becoming hive bees. Awesome. The hive I mean, I'm satisfied with its condition uh, at this time, just to be continue monitoring it. And then the bonus of catching more bees for that swarm <laughs> just made it a great day. Plus, you got to see all that wax that we had. So that's all I have for you on this one. So thanks for watching. Keep on watching, and I'll be making more. God bless. Mr. Ed, I'm out of here until the next video.